Are we on? Everybody will be right back. Keep them on. There's an alarm going off. <laughs> okay. Can you turn it off in there? <laughs> no, I just oh. I dumped it under the huh. water. Uh, welcome everyone welcome. to Viva La France. Oh my God, Rob, so, so that some excitement a, to begin the show. I like it. That was a test <laughs> of starting a sparkler in our studio here in downtown San Diego, and apparently <laughs> the um, the sprinkler systems, the uh, alarm system works very very well. So I don't recommend to try it at home. But we wanted to celebrate Rob the huh. release of the Beaujolais Nouveau. What do they say with when it, it's a uh, the Beaujolais has arrived, or it's Beaujolais time, or something like Beaujolais that? Beaujolais time. Yes, this is a uh, uh, what is the term? Um, no, I, I have it in my notes here. It is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Scream it! I can't believe it. Oh, I know what it is. It used to be it's Beaujolais. The Beaujolais has arrived. Mm -hmm. Now it it's Bo, it's Beaujolais Nouveau time. It's Beaujolais Nouveau time. It's time. <laughs> it is time. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I am Gina, uh, founder of Venissimo and um, Cheese Whiz, with my counterpart. <laughs> and I am the professor of cheese, Robert G. Robert G. Robert G. Just finished another virtual. I just almost started everything on fire <laughs> with my sparkling adventure. So it's definitely now time to pour a glass of the first release of the Beaujolais Nouveau 2020. Ooh, look at that. Oh, look at the color. It's actually a bright, brighter than I thought. Hey, can I tell you something? Yeah. It's on the sly, everybody. Right now, we're technically breaking the law. You know that, right? Oh, I. you know what? I think I know why you're going to say this, but go yeah. ahead. I'm going to say it because, you guys, technically, they are not allowed in France to release this wine until 12.01 a.m. on the third Thursday, right, of November. Wait, how many hours are they ahead of us, though? <laughs> Not that many. <laughs> oh, is it? No. Maybe. Well, tomorrow is the third Thursday. So are we okay? I don't know. Can anyone do the math for us? <laughs> Somebody can tell us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We might be like an hour late, actually. Oh, okay. Then I'm not... Is I it 1 a.m. in France? It might know. be. It might be. So cheers to that. What do we say? Uh, Argenté? Something uh, like that? Something like that. Sante? Something like this. Cheers, everyone, and welcome. I know we have Jason and Kristen and some regulars, um, so thanks for tuning in again to this fun, fun night where we're trying the the first batch of this wine along with the cheeses. Yeah. And we want to describe what we have. Shall we talk about the cheeses Let's, first? Yeah, maybe show what they have and then we can um, yeah. start eating. We'll do cheeses first and then we'll talk about the wine and we'll do the cheeses in order. Do you have the, the lid over there so I can see what order everyone... <laughs> I want to make sure I tell you oh, the, the order, order. <laughs> that, that is on your lid and I think... We usually put them in, in, the, um, in the order that we suggest tasting. So the first one, the brunette, is this what kind of white, soft, chalky one. That's, um, that's the brunette. Um, it, it, it might look a little bit like the camembert, but it's um, the, the last cheese, the camembert, is the one that has the really white brie-ish mold on it on the rind yeah they are similar looking are they not yeah but this is more uh, it, it's a goat cheese it's it's a little bit um whiter in, in color um okay the second cheese is really easy to tell and it's the mimolette and it's bright orange <laughs> that one won't be missed <laughs> yeah that one is a no-brainer it looks like a cheddar but it's really not a cheddar um okay the third one is the holler hocker and that is in these little spears you may have a couple of them Holler Hawker is number three. And then the fourth one is the Camembert. And it's this bad boy. And if you smell it, I think you'll know. Right it's, here. Mm. Yeah, it smells like. <laughs> nice so, face. <laughs> that's a good face. That's a good. <laughs> I love. To me, it has like a broccoli or. Yeah. A, kind of cabbagey, cabbage broccoli, barmy, yeah. puffy. And you would think that those are, are bad things. I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't like it. cauliflower, no, broccoli, right. but for some reason it's really good. It works good with the camembert. And everyone, you also have oh, yeah. on the plate today a French uh, cured, dry cured sausage, saucisson sec. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that, but a nice little French uh, sausage to go with the French vino. Yeah, and then what's the jam? Oh, the jam today, you guys, this is the jam. So this one is from, <laughs> from San Francisco. It's from the Jam Stand, and it's a blackberry walnut. Ah, that's and a it's, fun one. it's kind of pureed, so you don't get mm. chunks of walnut, but oh man, you get the flavor. This is really one of my favorites, especially this time of year. And you smell it, it smells like a, a blackberry bramble. I love it. 
Just absolutely love it. Nice. And then there's grapes. Of course, the rosemary. We love to put the rosemary on there. Yes, with everything. We're going to eat it with today with everything. Chocolate pretzels? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. That's our chocolate element of the day. Very French, right? I love Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, pomegranate seeds. Yes. That's a new one. Isn't I like that, that. Because it's fall, Rob. The we have forbidden to go with fruit. The, the fall season. Yeah, very exactly. Nice. And be very good. Cranberries, crackers. So all kinds of good stuff. As mm-hmm. always, the, the accoutrements are just kind of there for you to play around with. So try the accoutrements with with everything it just meant to add yes. some, some fun to the plates meant to go um our friend carol says they're nine hours ahead so we're, we're okay so yeah that, that then it is past 1201 right. yeah in okay. france so we're not breaking the law <laughs> Ooh, really worried we're gonna get in big mm-hmm. trouble mm-hmm. so what's the well first of all how is it oh wow so this is so is it's, it chilled it is chilled. Okay. So I learned mm-hmm. that it uh, Beaujolais Nouveau is, is best served slightly chilled. And you can see why, because it's 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 very fresh wine. Uh-huh. What was that movie? The Jerk? Was it that? Don't bring That's me the old stuff. That's a great movie. <laughs> bring me the new stuff. <laughs> so if you're going to drink new stuff, Beaujolais is the way to go, mm-hmm. right? Um, it is drier than I thought. And it does taste like grape juice, like yeah. fruit juice. Mm-hmm. It's just so light and crisp um, and a little dry. And um, this one, you guys, this is the most famous uh, version mm-hmm. of the Beaujolais in the world. Uh, Georges, I'm gonna butcher the name, de Boeuf. Mm-hmm. So has been making um, this wine for, I think it's 40 years. Yeah, 1933. And his son, I think, is taking, is taking over, it over now. Has taken okay. over. Um, and definitely the biggest producer in the world. I think everybody would recognize that label mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. I heard, read like, something like 30 million um, cases or something go out of this wine every year and it's the, what makes it nouveau it's it's like the first press olive oil mm-hmm. um it has to be it's only harvested about three weeks ago so yeah. it has not been spending a lot of time aging yeah. or doing its its wine fermentation thing mm-hmm. which is what kind of makes it crisp but it's a lot more um ruby winey color yeah. than i expected to be honest yeah i like it yeah it looks super fruity which mm-hmm. is kind of what it's known for it's always the gamay grape that's that's yeah. the grape um and uh, a couple things about Beaujolais. Beaujolais is um, geographically it is part of Bordeaux, or sorry, Burgundy. It is in, okay, Burgundy, it is in Burgundy, okay. but it is closer to the climate of, of the Rhone, uh, and uh, so the so it's sort of uh, in between. But it's it is in uh, Burgundy, um, cl- um, climate wise closer to the Rhone Alps wines. But it, it's really in its own category. Um, there, so there's a couple. Most Beaujolais, Beaujolais is just the name of the place. It's it's like the region. So they do produce wines year round. And um, this is just their youngest wine that comes out and it's a celebration of the harvest. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's really what it is. A lot of like the hype around Beaujolais is because of marketing. It's, it's exactly, yeah, to, to sell that new wine. Right? Yeah, exactly. well, what it is is they need cash flow yes. right after harvest. <laughs> it's genius, it's yeah. genius. And so they so they would race it to Paris, to the market, <laughs> and, so, uh, and, and try to sell it as fast as they can. Right. But, um, and now it's a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. Everybody wants to celebrate. Well, after the, the yeah. race to, to France, and then it, you know, it became a big thing in the United States, and even in the Far East. It's a huge thing in China and That's Japan. That's so cool. That's so interesting. Yeah. And, well, it's so huge that they do um, like fireworks, and people yeah. party all night long with the release of this wine, and hence that was the reason for the sparkler. Yeah, I yeah. thought it would be fun <laughs> to have our own fireworks. <laughs> well, the, the um, Beaujolais was first protected by the AOC oh, in 1936. Okay. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, the wines that they produce year round are different than the Nouveau because they, they're, they're aged. They, they, they get aged in, in oak barrel and the aging is what gives the wine, and same with cheese, all of its complexity. So that's, um, you know, they, they, a lot of like the wine purists out there will we'll talk more about the aged Beaujolais, not the Nouveau, the one that, that oh, yeah, comes yeah. out. Uh, the Nouveau is the new. On yes. the, the, mm-hmm. the third, the third Thursday <laughs> exactly. in November. Um, but uh, so I, I did mention that it's always the Gamay grape. Yeah. And uh, one of the I other like things that, um, that adds to the uniqueness of it is the way that it's, they ferment the wine. Mm. It's, um, it's, so it's, a, it's a type of fermentation called carbonic maceration. And, um, technical. Yeah, very technical. <laughs> but they, they take all of these whole grapes, these Gamay grapes, 
and they put them in in like the you know the the, the bin or whatever mm -hmm. it is that they they f ferment them in oh and can we go back don't they have to hand harvest them yeah they're oh yeah they're all like hand, harvested, hand harvested like champagne okay right like champagne and um so they go in this fermenter and the grapes on the bottom get crushed and so that the, the fermentation happens for those just like it normally would but the grapes on top stay whole mm -hmm. so the fermentation actually takes place within are you gonna ferment right here <laughs> <laughs> within each grape weird and it makes it really really fruity and um so they're they are they're like grape juicy wines yeah it, it's like a great grape juice you could just sit and chug this <laughs> Uh, well. <laughs> Woo, great juice yeah okay interesting i've never heard of that term or that technique so Cur that's very cool and i wrote serve chilled with an exclamation point you're <laughs> supposed to serve chilled yeah and this is pretty chilled and it's it's good yeah mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah um so we talk about the yeah. first cheese Ooh, let's do it let's do it Which all one's right first? so i noticed uh mm -hmm. when gina sent me the list that the, these cheeses and at least the styles are very classic european yeah cheeses and a little bit of everything we wanted to go with there you go on your notes Ooh. <laughs> um, so the first cheese that we recommend if you haven't um, devoured devoured <laughs> it already is the brunette and hopefully does anyone is anyone not sure which one is the brunette because it does look a little bit like the camembert it's wider i would say it's wider mm -hmm. the camembert has a more uh, prominent rind like it's, it's thicker, the thicker mm -hmm. rind yeah skin um, but mm -hmm. this so the brunette and it's on our plate it's right next to the cranberries it's kind of getting mixed in with the cranberries mm. can't talk now Eat a brunette. <laughs> neither can you <laughs> no. why did I take a bite then it's so good I wanted to start with the mm. goat because typically goaty. start with the goat but it is goaty I can definitely get the goat mm -hmm. and um hello now we have a dog <laughs> Now we got a dog. We had almost a fire. Now we have a dog. <laughs> this is Panini, everybody. Say hi, Panini. <laughs> hi. Panini likes, likes Yeah, just a second. Work. I'll be right back. Tell them about the brunette. I okay. To to so, um, Gina's mom just got here. She's talking to her. Um, so I want to tell you about the brunette, which is the one we just tasted. It's really goaty. So the brunette is from Northern Italy. It's from a region called Piedmont. And Piedmont means foot of the mountain. It's right next to another region in Italy called Lombardy, and that's where Milan is. It's where a lot of the population is, at least in northern Italy. Um, but Piedmont is is a region which is so rich in in just in food in general. Which you visited on the Veni voyage, yeah? yeah? It's, it was mm -hmm. the is the first place we visited on our first Veni voyages trip. So the things that the region is known for is well for their wine. Barolo. Barolo mm -hmm. is a little okay. town in Piedmont mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous and they produce some of the best wines in the world. But they've got truffles going on up there. They got everything. They have mm -hmm. uh, hazelnuts. They've got um, the slow food movement originated mm -hmm. there. But great cheeses. And a lot of the cheeses that they make are these small format cheeses. A lot of sheep mm -hmm. and goat's milk along with cow's milk. Um, but um, the, the style, the soft, small sheep and um in goat and mixed milk cheeses are called robiolas ah yeah and this one is in that family but it's a hundred percent goat's milk uh-huh super good you guys i highly highly recommend trying this brunette with the blackberry walnut mm -hmm. jam had you tried it yet uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> nobody can talk today <laughs> i guess i should huh mm -hmm. we're gonna have all the crackers for the on the brunette. Mm -hmm. So a couple of people, interesting, their taste buds are picking up the goatiness. Oh, I, I I'm get sensitive it. Sensitive to goat. I really get it on mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So isn't that funny, Jason? I just did it. I just did a tasting right actually with Jason with um, Pfizer. Oh. Um, <laughs> who, Small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, somebody was saying that you know they that I did the the order of the cheeses in a certain way that for me was the mild to wild order for, for mm. my taste buds, for yeah. my palate. And somebody said, oh, I didn't experience the goat as being very yeah. strong. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just interesting how everybody is a little bit different when it, when it comes to that. When it comes, people yeah. are Some people are more sensitive to goat or blue or truffle sure. or whatever it is. Than others. It's, um, I'm sensitive to goat. I gotta say, that's probably my most sensitivity. And I don't, I don't know if it's gotten more acute, you know, just eating more of it and being more, sen you know, knowing what it tastes like and what it is. Yeah. But uh, interesting. So to this, to me, if I drink the wine with the cheese, it kind of gets some, um, I taste mineral qualities. Mm. I get very minerally, stony. Yeah. KV. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. interesting, right? I don't know why, but that's, that's what I'm getting. 
And mm-hmm. by the way, the this gamay, like a really fruity wine, is there's st- that's the most perfect kind of wine for pairing with cheese. Perfect. It is. Um, I mean, that's just the ultimate contrasting or balancing pairing. Yeah. Um, that's always what we're looking for. Um, the trickiest wines to pair are are for reds at least are those really big tannic, um, you know, cabs and merlots and some of the blends because. It can just overwhelm the cheese, but also it can it can like give a bitterness sometimes too. Mm-hmm. Panini wants to be on. He camera. does. He wants. He <laughs> wants the cheese. Is what he really wants. <laughs> okay, you want to go with Dad? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Adios. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but um, but yeah. this is a really really great wine for lots of cheeses. For lots of cheeses, yeah. It's interesting because Barolos, you say, come from Piedmont, and some of those cheeses seem to be like milder to me. And Barolos can be so like pow, so interesting yeah. how they might, might go together. I'd love. We're going to test that. Barolo is going to be an upcoming uh, yeah. uh, featured wine because I want to learn more about it. There's a there's a cheese from from northern Italy from Piedmont called Castelmagno. Do you know? Oh, remember that one? Yes, oh, that's ooh, like ancient. It's ancient. It mm-hmm. looks when you look at the cheese. Like Google it. I'm seriously. It's look very it. crusty and like kind yes. of scary looking. Like it was left in a cellar for yeah. about 200 years. <laughs> we don't get it very often no, here. No, we need to. But if uh. you're if you're in that part mm-hmm. of Italy, every cheese shop has the Castelmagno in their in their oh. window. Remember in Sicily and when we went and toured the little cheese maker and they gave us a wheel that oh, looked yeah. just like it. Uh-huh. It's just that crustiness and oh yeah. And we hack oh, yeah. it in and yeah. So I mean it, it like smells and tastes like a like a cake <laughs> like <a> wall. <laughs> right. And I love But those that. that's really the cheese mm-hmm. that is like meant to be paired with those Barolos. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good you to just know. Don't, we don't it, mm-hmm. you don't see them very very often here yeah. in the States. Yeah, too. Okay. Shall we go with the second cheese? We shall, we shall. So what did we say was the second one, Mimolette? Very hard to identify on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you take that piece. Too. Okay, yay. <laughs> I didn't wanna like dive in and like bite your hand off, but yes. So this is this. the bright orange cheese. I think, and I will describe it, if you don't mind, Professor. Go ahead. If Cheddar and Gouda had a baby, <laughs> this would be it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. that's a that's good way. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. It is, um, so this is from France. This is from Le Nord. This is from the mm-hmm. north, and it used to. This is from a part of France that used to be Flanders, and um, the cheese itself is. It is. It kind of is like you think of it as cheddary because of the color, I think, but it's actually based on a Dutch cheese, a Gouda, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. called Edam, mm-hmm. and I bet some of you recognize that name, Edam, E D A M. It's a town in in Holland. And um, it, it's a really famous cheese, but the, the Edam cheese itself is a Gouda, or at least it's in the yeah. Gouda family. Um, and Goudas are defined by where they're from, Holland, and um, the way they're made. Um, so they have a, they get a washed curd, which makes them kind of like a, a little bit of a sweeter cheese. This, I don't get that like really Gouda sweetness. Like, so I don't, I think they, they tweak it a little bit when they Maybe. make it. Less sweet. I think it's, it I, is. I'm getting super sweet, and I don't know if it's because of the wine and the cheese before. For me, it's super sweet today, and sometimes mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. I get, but not you. I don't get super sweet. More so. cheddar-y like, more mm-hmm. kind of cheddar like. No, mm-hmm. I and then when I was um, when I was looking at the definition of um, the uh, carbonic maceration, it reminded me <laughs> of <laughs> it reminded me of the the cheddar process. So what happens is in the carbonic maceration. Right? Good, right with the, with the Beaujolais, um, the grapes on top are pushing the grapes on bottom, and, and it's it's smushing the grapes on the bottom. So it's just like in you know in other wine regions, like we're in Champagne, you'll see them um, you know they'll harvest the grapes and then they'll they'll smash them with their they'll step oh, on yeah. them mm-hmm. with their bare mm-hmm. feet. Well, that is happening by the grapes that are in the, that are on the top of mm-hmm. the grapes on the bottom, and uh, so it's it's kind of happening naturally. That's the, that's what they do in the cheddaring process, which gives cheddar cheese that um, that acidic tang that that it. Okay. Ends. To so get it's, that it's part of the process. The process. Why so, do they do that same type of process with this? Well, it's 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 very mm-hmm. to me that it has like a cheddary mm-hmm. tang to it, like an acidity to it. Um, the other thing is we're going to talk about camembert in a little mm-hmm. bit, but um, they do a similar thing with that, and it's it's really interesting where they the curds for a soft cheese are a lot bigger right. because they need to have more moisture in the curd. 
And so they'll they'll take a form. So like the shape of a camembert is like a disc, right? Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. about maybe that thick. Yeah. Well, they don't start that thickness. They're they're a yeah. lot thicker. That's something cool to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as it presses, yep. yeah, yep. the way it dispels. So they'll they'll actually ladle into these forms like four, five, or six big curds, and then they'll they'll let it just like you press down on yeah. itself. Right, and all the whey just yeah. drains out, yeah. and then it becomes this squished little disc. So you, you see, get, like yeah. similar, a similar process with mm. the cheese and, and the wine. It's a wine. good point. Yeah, and the techniques are kind of the same yeah. in all these fermented food processes, right? And and, mm -hmm. and a lot of it is all just uh, it, it's like it's always the same, the same steps or the same process, but just a, at different levels, like. Sometimes it's a you know it's a, it's a vat as big as this room, or sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's just like a pot. Oh, a, a copper pot, yeah. a copper kettle. <laughs> but it's it, yeah. if you, when you look at it, it's all the same yeah. steps. Yeah, same process really. When it comes down to it, um, these two together, Rob. Do you love sweetie pies? Yeah, minerally taste on the wine and everything with the brunette. Sweet with this. They're very complementary, which we've talked about before. I think that they just blend together. Neither takes away from the other. It, this is a good combination to me. Yeah, I tasting love it. it again, love it, it tastes like cheddar to me. It tastes, it tastes more way more cheddar than, than it Gouda. does. I would give Gouda. you that. I'm going to say more cheddar today too. And it depends, you guys. You can, we get mimolettes that are right. not as aged. This is mimolette, only, right? This it, wasn't a cheddar. That it's mimolette. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did they did they, did they, did they school us on the, on the way? Um, uh, sometimes it's very soft and it's a lot more mild and mm -hmm. subtle. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of this, the orange, you know, oftentimes is what makes a cheese bright orange like this. And if anybody knows the annatto seed, mm -hmm. um, that's a, a natural seed and that produces this orange color. Yeah. And that's where they get this bright orangeness. And uh, didn't they not, um, Rob, when they used to pay taxes, <laughs> using cheese to pay taxes, they yeah. needed to differentiate. Yeah. Oh, my cheese is better than his cheese. And how they did that often is with color. Yep. Yeah. It, so and then um, it's become a tradition to have an orange cheese. There's a few mm -hmm. reasons for it, but that's you know those are a couple of the big ones. You know, a lot of it was to to make it seem like the cheese was from um, animals, cows in this case, that were on a better diet. Um, because the the better the diet, the healthier the healthier the diet, the darker the the color of the milk and well really the cheese. Yeah. And um and so it just sort of became tradition after that. So. Um, and talk about the most interesting part of the cheese. Like if you get it, if you see this cheese whole, first of all, I'll just say this part, and then Rob can fill you on mm -hmm. the rest. But it looks like a cantaloupe. Yeah. I mean, it really, really does. It's got it brown and crusty outside. Yeah. And about the size of a cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, I mean, the cheese itself. When we, we get them in these balls, and they look mm -hmm. like they look like cannonballs. Yes. <laughs> They're Which really is hard. A, isn't that part of folklore of <laughs> yeah. the uh, mimolet? That was another another story. <laughs> Some of them we don't know if they're BS or not. So. Yeah, but we'll, we'll still perpetuate the. <laughs> I don't know. We might get flagged, you know, for fact um, checked. Well, what is news. the term? Uh, fact check fact or out of context? context. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't regulate uh, YouTube, I don't think. No, I don't think so. We're going to see. No, but like. Uh, so the, they come in, they, they look like cannibals, they're really, really hard, but what's double, what's really weird is when we, when we take them out of their boxes that they come in, usually the bottom of the box is covered with a, with a dust. Oh yeah, isn't and, that so crazy, a dust? Uh, uh -huh. And the reason is that there are, and we tell you this after you've already eaten it, <laughs> <laughs> is that there are little mites that yes. uh, crawl around on the rind, no. and they... Um, it, like this? They crawl around like this. <laughs> I think they army crawl actually. Yeah. No, like <laughs> yeah. But they're eating the rind, and it's actually good for the cheese. And yes, it's it's, um, it's microbiology at its finest. Uh -huh. Cheese mites on mimolette. Look it up on the internet. Yeah. There's fun videos. We have one. Don't want to scare people about it because yeah. all of these is living things <laughs> are happening. Um, but um, it's an interesting thing about the mimolette. It makes it very unique. It's very interesting, and the, yeah. the other interesting thing is when we cut them open and we we'll display them. I mean, we, we're I don't think we're displaying cheeses right now. Maybe we put them out, but you can usually see the mimolette on the top of the case, and it looks like a cantaloupe. That's another mm -hmm. thing. It, oh yeah, so the cantaloupe. rind right. mm -hmm. looks like a cantaloupe rind, and then the color is just this. I mean, you, know, you I see love the, the color. color. It's gorgeous. It's it, it's so fall. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good Halloween cheese. Halloween or Thanksgiving. Yeah, or Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes, we like it. So we got more votes. Uh, George, 
I think Carol, a lot of people think it's, um, and Jason, more cheddar I so think it's more cheddar very cheddar today I, than gouda -y. To me, it's way mm -hmm. more cheddar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they if they this batch is different. You yeah. mentioned how some of them come in and they're softer or um, more more mild. That usually is connected to age, um, and we get the um, younger versions. Are, they're called Mimolet Bull, right? The Bull is younger, and then yeah. the View is old. Aged. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the the young version could be a couple to three months or so, yeah. and they're this really mild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is age. I mean, and it, it's kind of cool. Like when we have some experience with cheese, and so like we can. You can look at it and know. <laughs> yeah, we can kind of look at cheeses, taste them, feel them, and we, we, we have a good idea of age. And this is yeah. probably 12, 12 to 18 months, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, we had a question from Carol on, you know, where, um, from what part of France? Yeah. And uh, little, so it's east of Paris um, and getting close to um, Belgium and the Netherlands, the border. Hence yeah. that, you know, it's more like a Dutch cheese, a cross between the Edom and it's, the French. It's Nord yeah. Pas de Calais. Yes, so, well said. I can never say that. <laughs> that's the region. And so like, that's where you come in from, from England. Mm -hmm. There's a, I know there's like that boat that go, it goes mm -hmm. to Calais, mm -hmm. right? And um, I don't know where the- so they North have, East. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it used to be part of Flanders. So that's the right. Flanders that mm -hmm. were all those like, you know the Flemish uh, painters were from like that. That that used to be Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of Flanders without thinking Flemish of the Simpsons. Flanders. Yeah. Flanders is the neighbor, right? Ned, Ned Flanders. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi, Heidi Ho. Doodly, Heidi, Heidi Ho. Neighbor. This is oodly -ga doodly. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm now I'm never gonna get that out of my head. Thank you. Never, thank you. Every time you say it, you're gonna say oodly doodly did. Okay. Um, Purchasing the mites, Carol. Yes. Okay, whenever you get, when we cut a piece of mimolette at the shop, and we cut a wedge that almost looks like a piece of cantaloupe, mm -hmm. like you would cut it in a, a little round uh, crescent shape like yeah. that, that rind will have mites on it. Now, this is a drama with the government and the FDA and rules, you know, of importing cheeses. For a while, we couldn't even get mimolette because there were too many mites per square inch than what was allowed. Um, so, you know, I don't know. There will probably always be, there's always allowed to have some mites. You don't see them. I mean, if you shook the piece on a piece of paper and stared and watched it, um, you might see that it looked like it moved. The dust blew a little bit. Like if you blow a piece of dust and it kind of rolls away, you might see that movement, but it's, we're talking minuscule, tiny, tiny micro size things. Um, I, you don't eat the rind. You can try to eat the rind. It's even harder and crustier to me than Parmigiano yeah. rind. Um, but you certainly can, um, but it's not good. <laughs> You'd kind of just be like gnawing on it. You would. It'd be like gnawing on a piece of bark, honestly. Um, but completely not harmful, right? Completely yeah. safe. It's a natural process of the cheese. And we're saying in England, um, they sometimes get blue veining in their cheddars and they will charge extra yeah. for the piece that has the blue veining. And we're like, maybe we can promote the mites and um, people want to buy the mighty piece, the mighty good piece. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's laughing at the jokes today. <laughs> I'm not sure well, that's laughing new. or crying that's, or just That's different. Visually. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. And uh, George asks, oh, to confirm, the um, Mimolet is cow milk. Yeah. Yes, George Cow. Brunette, Sorry, goat, mm -hmm. Mimolet, cow. Actually, they're all cow's milk. After the Except brunette, they're all cow's milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have a sheep's milk today. <laughs> We've got lots of good eyes today. George is wondering what I have behind here is, <laughs> is um, an animal on the counter. It is not a pig. It is indeed a hippo. This hippo traveled with a, well, not with us. Short story, a long story I'll make short. Uh, <laughs> found him in South Africa. My husband, Roger, fell in love with that hippo and we wanted to ship it back. And that was in, I think we were there in September and uh, we said ship it back and we waited and waited and waited and along comes February March and we thought when is our hippo ever gonna get here we hope she gets here um, she finally got here this is now named hope the hippo from South Africa <laughs> so yes George she, she's protecting the front door she's our she's facing it's the front. world's biggest paperweight <laughs> yeah it is. it's it's wormwood have you tried to lift it I think I have actually. yeah it's a heavy hip it's a heavy hippo <laughs> Not a hungry hippo? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, yes, Carol, uh, Lil is correct. L-I-L-L-E -L -L -E is where Mimolet is from. I think try to make sure, all the questions before I drink too much Pujolet. Forget <laughs> the questions. <laughs> Shall all we, right, uh, onward, Captain. Number to the next. three. Number three. 
What are you doing? Uh, de toi. Number toi. I'm trying oh. to eat delicately <laughs> without just gnawing, but it's not really. I'm going to gnaw. Here, I'll talk about cheese. You can, you can chew. <laughs> okay. Okay. Number three is this guy here. The holler hawker. This is a really fun one. This is actually a good one uh, where you can eat the rind, and it's not too. Uh, it's it's one of those natural rinds that you definitely want to have a lot more of the cheese or the the paste of the cheese compared to the rind. But you can eat that, and it looks kind of mm -hmm. crusty and weird. Mm -hmm. um, holler hawker. Isn't the cheesemaker Walter? Yeah, oh. it's actually holler hawker. Okay, I heard him say holler hawker <laughs> and holler hawker. Ooh, okay. Uh, so we have to get with the Swiss. No, we're gonna ask Walter next year when we mm, go on our Alps tour at we, some point. Yes. We, yeah, we have a, a tour that we, where we're gonna go visit this mm -hmm, cheese maker. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go in what September, and everything is on hold. But yeah. we're gonna we're planning we're on doing it next September. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then making it a regular thing every other year. We'll maybe try to, every year. Yeah, maybe every <laughs> year, and we'll time it with uh, <laughs> Oktoberfest so we can mm -hmm. do that. End up in Munich for that. Um, mm -hmm. But the name of the cheese, Hollerhocker, uh, or however you say it, stands <laughs> for, or it means, cellar sitter. Say that fast. Cellar sitter, settle, cellar sitter, cellar sitter, cellar sitter, cellar sitter, cellar sitter, cellar sitter. After a few drinks. The uh, cellar sitter, and that just refers to the fact that it's aged. Um, it's in the Alpine family of cheeses. These are some of my favorites for sure. Um, and it's cow's milk, just like... Pretty much um, all of those types of cheeses are cow's milk. You, for the regulars, you notice that we always talk about alpines. We almost always have alpine style cheeses in these in these tastings because we just love them so much. Um, this one happens to be from Switzerland, um, but they are made all over, really all over the Alps. Um, you know, some of the other ones that we that we featured before, Comte, Beaufort, Gruyere is, I would say, the most Famous of this style of cheese. Oh yeah! Isn't it so good? Is it good? I have to get. Don't eat it all. No, there's another okay. piece for you. Good, good, good. And it's from uh, the region. Carol is Saint, Saint Gallen, if I'm saying it right in Swiss. Saint Gallen. It looks like Saint Gallen. G, G A L L E N. Correct. Very near the Austrian border. So, um, in fact, you could cross into Austria in 30 minutes. You're at the cheesemaker. And it's it's one of those regions where they've got they they make everything there. I mean, it's. Very rich in, in oh. cheese making. They make Gruyere's, they yeah. make Appenzeller. I mean, we have happy cows in California. Rob and I have seen them. Like uh, Point Reyes, those are happy yeah, cows. I've tried to pet them. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But you can pet the ones. You've not seen super happy mm -hmm. cows. So you've seen these alpine cows mm -hmm. way up on the hills, big bells. Yeah. I mean, ridiculous. The grasses they're eating. Is reflected. You taste that in the milk of the cheese, right? You just taste it, and you can yeah. hear them because you got the the cowbells yeah. like going oh off and making sweet music. Magic, just complete magic. The sound so, of the the sound of the, the sound hills. of music. The sound of music. <laughs> the hills are alive. The hills are alive, <laughs> truly, with the sound of music. More cowbell, more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> but this is raw milk, and um, oh yeah, so it's the only one that's raw on the plate, Rob. And yeah, you can tell them why and how we can still do raw for those that don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We don't. We haven't talked much about mm -hmm. raw milk versus pasteurized. Oh, wow milk or at least not for a while but the the law in in this country is that we cannot import or sell any any raw milk cheese if it is under a certain age which is two months and so like this brunette the brunette the first cheese is about three to five weeks old um, and so they have to pasteurize that cheese otherwise we couldn't import it we couldn't even have it same with the camembert which we're gonna have next it's a the camembert is a little bit under two months and so mm -hmm. By law, we have to get a pasteurized version. Um, what is pasteurization? That is where the first thing that a cheesemaker does when the milk comes into the to the creamery or the factory or wherever it's made is they decide, do we pasteurize it or not? If they mm -hmm. pasteurize it, they heat that milk up to 140, 150 or so. And, um, and that is to kill off any harmful bacteria. Mm -hmm. They will then cool it down really quick. They don't want to kill everything. They, for some cheeses, like for some of the big commodity factory cheeses, they will just scorch the heck Zap out of everything. it. <laughs> and that's why they're so flavorless. <laughs> um, so it's a kind of a delicate balance for, for these cheeses. Um, after 60 days, 60 days is a totally 
arbitrary line where 60 they sit. days six feet you could ar ar arbitrariness is 18 whatever, years yeah. old 21 <laughs> years old i mean these are like arbitrary did, picked I, I did not i was not ready yeah. on my 18th birthday to do some of the or 21st birthday or whatever yeah. it was right, right yeah. <laughs> things didn't change overnight yeah but um for for the raw milk cheeses they the idea is that the, that harmful bacteria will have died off mm -hmm. on its own at that time so for the traditional, for the classics, you know, Parmigiano Reggiano, mm -hmm. a lot of the Alpine cheeses that are over, they're just hard aged cheeses, they're over 60 days. We, you know, we get raw milk versions mm -hmm. of those. Mm -hmm. So we have a ton of raw milk cheeses, just not the soft fresh ones. Yeah. Just not fresh or soft cheeses. Like never mozzarella raw, yeah. never camembert raw. Yeah. Um, because of the 60 days. Yeah. yeah. But you, you know, they, a lot of times they will make raw milk versions and if you you can just go there and, and have them so that's all you gotta yeah. do just go to just go there just go to France. that's how you can taste them <laughs> but um, this together with the wine rob so interesting sometimes i'm scared i gotta tell you to taste alpines with the wines because if there's any one style of cheese that sometimes i think clashes with mm -hmm. wines it's the alpines and i don't know really why that is i'll have to dig deeper we'll have to delve into that but um this is good together it's really bright so it makes it more to me almost acidic or mm -hmm. there's something um, a bit of a punch to it compared to the mimolette that was super just melted together this one has more of a fireworks fireworks <laughs> yeah watch out for the watch out <laughs> for the alarm <laughs> i you know the alpine cheeses that we always say are the most complex of any of the cheeses yeah. so i think and i always say they're the most versatile mm -hmm. and they are but then because they're so complex things can go wrong too yeah like what and you were just always, saying yeah they so sometimes It'll go, it'll go bitter, it'll just go sideways on you, and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, this is a nice combo you guys have to try if you can. The, uh, the Hollerhocker Schollerhocker with the rosemary. I did it already with the blackberry walnut. It's awesome. you got to try that, Rob. It's so good. Um, but with the rosemary, the cows are eating some of this. Mm -hmm. Naturally goes together. And anyone that is cooking for Thanksgiving um, next week, um, try to melt the Schollerhocker in your potatoes or mm. with your stuffing. Alpines are awesome melters. And all of the inherent flavors in the milk just blossom when you melt them. That's what, why fondue is so good. Mm -hmm. You melt that and then woo, it goes crazy. Isn't mm. it so good with the rosemary? That is or did really you good. Do? Yeah. I mm -hmm. did, yeah. Yeah. Huh. I just ate the whole piece. <laughs> <laughs> the Alpines give, um, mm -hmm. especially when you melt them, they get... The oil comes out mm -hmm. and it just adds so much flavor. I made a, I made a mac and cheese today and I put in, I don't remember what, what cheese, do? it was mm -hmm. one of these cheeses and yes. I put in like a whole stick of butter too. Yeah. <laughs> was, Why wouldn't you? It was awesome. And then of course that like orange powder stuff. You didn't. Uh -huh. You did? Uh -huh. So you bought the box. Yeah. But you just enhanced it with your other cheeses but still the orange powder. Yeah. I don't put milk in. Some people put milk. I don't do milk. Oh, you don't do milk? No. Nope, I do yeah. butter. I do extra butter and extra cheese. <laughs> so it's like a quattro formaggio yes. powder and the three others. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's make that one day. That sounds kind of good, actually. We can do you know a fancy spin on so many different things. Yes, let's take non-fancy things and fancy spin them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, we can just do like okay. ham and cheese, but with, uh, yeah. you know, like... The, the you know Serrano jamon or the, yes. the famous uh, Iberico jamon. Oh, stop! Yes. Manchego. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Shall we do? Uh, Let's move on. You know what? Let's try oh, the, the sauce sans sec. Yeah. So sauce sans sec, just French term for kind of a dry cured sa sausage. Um, usually pork based. I mean, all the French ones I've seen have been pork based. Some makers in the U.S. use beef. Um, but typically the spices in it, not super spicy, Whoa. but maybe you get garlic and pepper. That's good. Yeah. Isn't that so, so good? So, what so is this the, one, what's the herb or spice in that? Uh, this one should be, just be garlic and pepper. Mm. Are you getting other herbs? Yeah, I get something sweet in that. Mm. Should be, um, oh, it's super sweet smelling. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, dry cured salumi. It's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. Saucy song. I had to have a little bit of that with the, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I looked up um, what saucisson, mm -hmm. saucisson, saucisson, what it means, mm -hmm. um, or what the word, the word comes, okay, from. comes from. Saucisson mm -hmm. comes from the Latin salsus, meaning salted. Mm. So okay. like, of mm -hmm. course, that's we see that all the time, like derivations of the word salt. 
Geez, salted. Yep. Because salt is a preservative. Yep. So salted lemon. You could salt anything and almost purpose preserve it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salt is mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. miracle. It is the miracle. miracle yeah. It sure thing, is. ingredient. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jason is in. Are you in to come to Europe with us? Um, are you in for eating all these more of these cheeses? I'll, Jason, I'll put you, you on the list, Jason. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll add it right now. <laughs> Jason, can, at this point, you can lead the tour, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> I handed it over. <laughs> um, you ready for the camembert? Mm -hmm. So uh, ah. we did, uh, so we had the, goat, the goat's milk from Piedmont. We had the Alpine, the Mimolette. And then um, the next one is another, is a classic. Maybe the, maybe the most classic of any of these cheeses that we've had. And it is the Camembert. And the piece that I have here is, it's, it's not fully ripe. So the middle is kind of chalky. Um, it's, it, th this cheese does get fully ripe. So this, this actually probably could have gone for another week or two and kept getting riper and riper and stronger and stronger. I can smell it, and um, what I what I can smell is the riper part around the rind. Um, it's all edible. And you got are three. You, different, I hear you eating. <laughs> three different textures going on. <laughs> um, so Camembert is named for a little village, a little town in the region of Normandy in the north. It is. Um, I know when I, I got to visit there a few years ago, and I, we visited um, a cheesemaker who made camembert, oh, and that's nice. where I saw that process where they ladled in the curds into the forms, and um, it's it's kind of like a rival to brie. It's really almost identical to French brie. Now, this this is confusing because most of most people experience brie or what what gets called brie as double creams and triple creams and those really buttery kind of mild mm -hmm. cheeses Brief, yeah. that are that are really more popular i would say they're super popular yeah mm -hmm. but there there's a handful of brie cheeses from the region of brie and brie mm -hmm. is east of paris mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and the thing that where where brie de mo comes from brie de mo mm -hmm. brie de Nangy. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they're kind of like on the way out to burgundy the famous mm -hmm. wine region mm -hmm. in champagne mm -hmm. and um but the brie's come in big wheels like this or like yeah one know, of them is like, like three pounds i mean it's a big oh, wheel but it's brie, flat some mm -hmm. of the brie de mo's are like five pounds they're yeah. flat it looks like Beautiful. a big pizza kind of yeah it looks like a pizza <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i could eat probably eat a whole like a pizza <laughs> okay if yeah. you did that that would be <laughs> Ooh, cheese eating contest. Let's do it. Oh, that would be. <laughs> I think Jason, George, Carol, no and they're all in. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? But so there's a couple of things that that differentiate. Now, so Brie is the, the famous region. That's where the, the style gets named for that region. And uh, the, the wheels are a little bigger, but it's more like north central France. And of course, just like just like wine making, um, cheese making kind of spread as pilgrims traveled around, or you know, sometimes during, when when wars happened and soldiers went to different parts of, yeah. of Europe. So anyway, the the brie recipe somehow got into Normandy oh um, over time, and so it, it was taught to somebody who made brie who who went through Normandy, and um, and they just decided to make the cheeses in smaller. Um, forms because they fed the soldiers that pe soldiers yeah. would eat this like they'd get their little discs and carry it with them mm -hmm. well so okay the, a brie round is about a half a pound mm -hmm. as opposed to those like three to five pound wheels mm -hmm. yeah. sorry a camembert round as opposed to the brie round so the, the size is smaller in the late the last decade of the 1800s so, so the last decade of the 19th century they made these little crates these little wood crates they're so cute yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is when that's when camembert started really leaving normandy and it was just in time for a lot of the wars that you know came in the 20th century so camembert started spreading everywhere the other thing that distinguishes camembert from traditional french brie is that in normandy you have these norman cattle and these cattle can eat 70 80 pounds of grass in a day and that's crazy you so you can even if you're ever driving along the coast the region next to normandy is um Brittany, mm -hmm. and they have that that famous monastery out there um what's it called it's out in the english channel it's gorgeous somebody will tell us okay <laughs> um, 
and then you, you can see cows and even sheep kind of grazing right there but the 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 English channels right there and the breeze comes in from the channel falls on the grasses yeah. and those cows eat those grasses yes that's salty uh-huh mm -hmm. and so when when they when they give milk and when they make cheese from that milk you can kind of taste like that salty ocean seaweedy flavor in those norman cheeses and camembert has a little bit of that mm -hmm. and that might be where like that that veg vegetable yeah. thing comes from a little Mushroomy. bit. Mushroomy. It's yeah. just earth. It's it, earthy. To me, it's earth. I love, love, love camembert. I can't describe it. It's my top. I, I mean, it's up there. It's my top the five, maybe yeah, top for three. Sure. For sure. And you guys, if you knew, you've always hear baked brie on, brie on crew. So that's ba uh, brie baked in puff pastry. Try camembert yeah. baked in puff pastry. Mm -hmm. It's even way more better. Way more <laughs> I better. I think way more better. <laughs> and um, super good. I'm surprised. I was surprised that camembert was suggested and often to go with Beaujolais because yeah. Beaujolais is kind of light uh -huh. and camembert can be super pungent. And this isn't even the most pungent. It can be no. way more. Well, I was telling him yeah. at the beginning how this this is a young camembert. Oh, I can yeah. tell by looking at it. Yep, that the it's squishiness, young. right? Mm -hmm. The color of the rind. It's not as brown. It's not as squishy. Well, look at the yeah. middle is it's not fully ripe. Yeah. And it's I mean it's good to go. It's just milder. It's going to get stronger over time. Yes, as it ages and squishier like me. When uh -huh. you get yeah, all the older you get <laughs> squishier you get. <laughs> but, it's good. Okay, but oh, my point was it goes with the Beaujolais, which um, is lighter. But it, this also is classic with like a big Cabernet, mm. like a Cabernet Sauvignon. So it can kind of um, swing both ways. You know, this yeah. cheese is kind of versatile. Um, just love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to mention uh, there's another pretty well known cheese from Normandy that's mm -hmm. usually a lot, a lot of cheesemakers who make camembert also make the other protected cheeses from Normandy, and it's called Pont Levesque. Mm. So that's a, it's a little bit stinkier, but it has that, that salty ocean yeah. essence Briny. to it. Briny, that's a good word. And wasn't that voted one of the stinkiest cheeses in the world, Pont yeah. Levesque? Mm -hmm. Well, Pont Levesque, they can be mm -hmm. very stinky or they can mm -hmm. be sort of milder versions. Again, yeah, true. it's a soft cheese, so they'll, they'll make a raw milk for them, yes. and they'll make a, a pasteurized version for oh. us. <laughs> they also, um, <laughs> They make, um, what's the cheese with the bull rush on it? Do you, um, the, oh, 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 with the L, it's... Um, it's not Long Gras, because that's from Champagne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were just Livaro. talking about that. Livaro. Okay, okay. That's it. Yeah, there's yeah. one, there's another one from Normandy called Livaro, and it's L-I-V-A-R-O-T, Livaro. Mm -hmm. And um, they make, they wrap it in a bull rush, or like, uh, it's like twigs that they wrap it in. And uh, it's really, really strong, really stinky. Mm -hmm. And uh, they make version for there, version for here. But, um, the, oh, the other thing I was going to say is when, when, in, when in Normandy you can visit all the famous monuments from World War II. Yeah, I mean, that's what they're famous for They're really for famous. Now. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the beaches, Omaha Beach, and, yeah. and there's, um, mm -hmm. they have really beautiful monuments there. I took some sand back, actually. You did? Is yeah. that allowed? I probably You're breaking the law. <laughs> breaking the law. <laughs> breaking the law. They, um... <laughs> But, oh, I was going to say, there's, there's a bunch of tourist trap restaurants just beyond the monuments. Don't go there. <laughs> well, you shouldn't, but I was starving. <laughs> so we, uh, we went to, to eat at one of the places, and it's really funny because they're very territorial, the French. And uh, when in Normandy, you're just like, you, you look at the menu, and there's four cheeses on the menu. And they have them for dessert, usually, at the end of the meal. And uh, the four cheeses were Livaro, <laughs> Camembert, Pont Levesque, and Neuchâtel, which is a, that's oh, yeah. the other one. And that's the mildest of the bunch. Yeah, if you're gonna a, go mild. That's it's a milder breed. Yeah, but they're all soft. They're all yeah. cow's milk. They're all kind of in the same family. Yeah. Um, but then you go to the next region. Like if you go to Brie, guess what? They yes. have, there's no Camembert on the menu. It's all Brie de Meaux yes. and Brie de Nangy. Right. You can argue that that's cool yeah. to support just local, but then you miss out on some of those yummy things. Like if I never had a Loire goat and I'm in Normandy, how sad. Well, and that's, you know? that's just it. I mean, if you yeah. ask somebody from the Loire, what's the best cheese in France? The Loire. Loire. Goat cheese, Loire goat cheese. You ask somebody in Roquefort what the best French cheese is, they tell you it's Roquefort. And, um, but the, the diversity of French cheese is so, it's just, it's yeah. my favorite because they're, they're all over the place and yeah. um, like you even have all the alpine styles made in France as That's well. True. Um, all the yeah. washed rind stinky cheeses. Yes, they, they make all styles Everything. pretty much. Not big on cheddars. 
you know. Just Mimolet. Mimolet. Um, the other one, Cantal. Yeah, Maybe there's one there's called... Maybe one. That's it, right? And I believe Cheddar. we featured Cheddar. Cantal on one of these tastings mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. recently. But I that's the closest thing. for that. So Carol, she must be a professor too. Like, Carol, the professor. Mm-hmm. Of the mm, monastery you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Could it be Mount St. Michael or Michelle? Michelle, that's it. Is that it? Yep. Yes, that's it. Yep. Robbie says, professor says yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's really cool, but what's interesting too is that they, the sometimes it used to be just out in the middle of the English Channel. So okay, it was, just, not it was like an island. It's wow. gorgeous. Look it up. Yeah. Um, we'll look up pictures in a little bit. Okay. But um, huh. the, sometimes the, the water level goes all the way down, so it's just like you can walk out to it. That's crazy, like on a uh, pedestal or something. Yeah. I mean, the way you're describing it. But it's just like a lot of, um, if you see like mm. the. In Meteora in, in Greece, how they mm-hmm. build like monasteries on rocks. Yeah. It's like same kind of like that idea. Yeah, it's really. I was cool. gonna say like Alcatraz. <laughs> That's not such a good. Idea. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's like Alcatraz. There you go. Yeah, I like your <laughs> your description better. Yeah. Well, they they would build monasteries and a lot of times on on like rocks or high places because they wanted to get as close to God as possible. Okay, that makes sense. You know, and yeah, then yeah. what did you know? What did they make in monasteries? <laughs> beer, lots of, lots beer, of cheese. Beer and cheese. Yeah. And wine. Well, I mean, wine why wouldn't you? If you were why wouldn't you? Why would ever you're... make that? Like, of course. You live in some cool monastery on the top yeah. of a mountain. Like, I'm going to make that good stuff and hang out here. It's just, it takes too long to get to the grocery store. So we're going to make <laughs> gonna cheese make and beer and wine. And beer and wine. Okay. If anybody <laughs> has camembert left, do it with this blackberry. Seriously. I'm kind of hand. saving mine because uh-huh. I don't want to just like uh-huh. go nuts and, in front of everybody. Mm. For girls that don't walk out there, you talk about the low tide. Yeah, you probably get stuck in the mud or whatever. Yeah, but full moon tides are high. So oh. Like, like, that'd be the time you wouldn't go out there. Oh, gotcha. Now we know. Mm-hmm. So she's, I, I, and I think mm-hmm. that San Michelle is actually part of Brittany, and, and maybe Carol knows that too. Um, but they're right next to each other. Like, you can drive, if you drive mm-hmm. along the coast, you can literally see the those big old... Norman cows out there grazing, and and I, I even have a picture of. Um, are they bigger than the Swiss ones and the? Aust- they're comparable. comparable. I don't okay. I don't know if they are okay. bigger or not, but um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, they're they're gorgeous, gorgeous mm-hmm. animals. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorge. So Viva la France! I think all the pairings worked today. I hope everybody. Liked. I didn't try that pretzel yet. Um, but the pretzel, the pretzel would even be good with the rosemary. Mm-hmm. I love the chocolate pretzels. I really do. <laughs> they are so good. <laughs> it's our new favorite thing. Yeah. Just to have that hint, just a hint of it's chocolate. Salty, sweet, got a little crunch going on. You should put it in the blackberry jam. Ooh. Super yummy. Like right, right? right now? Yeah, you should do it. So, Gert, my mom, oh, you didn't see her. Um, <laughs> we used to have blackberry brambles. We lived in Sacramento because you're a Northern California guy, too. Yeah. We lived in Sacramento. Blackberries grew rampant in our backyard. And oh my God, she'd be out there in her little dress and skirt. You can picture this, uh-huh. picking blackberries, and then at the end of the season, cutting the cutting them back. You know, pruning them. I guess mm-hmm. is the word. Um, in her little heels with the pruners, and then she would cut the twigs like this big, so they would all go into the trash bag. <laughs> but we would make blackberry jam, blackberry syrup, blackberry everything because it's so good. Yeah. We visited a cheesemaker up there one time, and remember they had blackberries on which there? Which one? Which one? Um, Who are you talking about? Northern California? In Northern California, it was... Um, blackberries, blackberries. It, they weren't. They were not there when we showed up. Oh, yes. It was Redwood Hill. Redwood wasn't Hill. Wasn't it? Yes. <gasps> and so we, we just hung out. And we, so we just loitered on their property and picked <laughs> did, blackberries. Took picture, and took pictures <laughs> of goats. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's in Norman, more Normandy. Oh, it is. Okay. The San oh, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, San Michelle in Normandy. Visit if you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's one of the, it's just one of the most incredible sights. Just looking at it, it's amazing. Yeah. So, Rob, we've got gl- good recommendations. I don't know if everybody had a favorite, but great recommendations and love the wine. It was better than I thought. Sometimes I feel, twenty twenty has been a shitty year, we know, but the twenty twenty Beaujolais Nouveau yeah. is good. And I think I've had, the, I know I've had this before, where I didn't care for it as much. Mm-hmm. This year's a good year. Do you get cherry at all? Is there? I can say yeah. cher- cherry's a good one. Because mm-hmm. mm. that's what I kind of read. Is it, it's a little bit of cherry. cherry. Yeah, cherry. it's good. I, I don't know. I could my favorite pairing. I just thought that went so well together. Surprisingly, Mimolette. I wouldn't mm. have guessed that out of the gates. I would have said I love the camembert with it best. But 
Just together, I like the mimolette, but they're all good. Did you have a favorite cheese of the night? Camembert is always my favorite. Yeah, you can't. No, Camembert is always my favorite. Always. Did you put that in your mac and cheese ever? <laughs> I have not yet. Should I? You think you should. <laughs> Why not? Oh, why not? Why not? And why eat not? the rind on the camembert. Definitely eat the rind. Oh, definitely eat the rind. Yeah, even if it's brown and squishy looking, try it. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, George loved the um, brunette, was the winner in the Paris household. Yeah. And Jason, br brunette's gotten two votes. So Br brunette is the winner so far. Brunette Unless is... Unless we hear otherwise, brunette might win with the viewers tonight. I, like I said, I'm yeah. sensitive to goats. Me too. I have tried... This yeah. is embarrassing to admit. I maybe I'm not as sophisticated as as you gentlemen. Well, you did disclose that you use powdered cheese in your <laughs> mac and cheese. <laughs> I I like the brunette, but I I huh? mean just little bits here and there. I, it's not one of those cheeses like those goat cheeses are not the types of cheeses that, that I just lop like up. Like devour. Like, like you no. eat the whole camembert. Camem yeah. I could have a, a yeah. wheel of camembert for dinner. Just camembert and bread. That's that would be my dinner. Carol drank her whole bottle. I'm not. I'm <laughs> guessing she did because the wine's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> not just a glass. Maybe she shared, but I was thinking I was doing good, but um, apparently not as good. Well but, done. Uh, well done, everyone. So, what is next on the agenda of Wino Wednesdays, Rob? It's we're getting crazy now because we're getting into we the holidays. I don't remember. It's the two weeks from now, the second of December. We're going gin. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. So we're going holidays, and it's mixers and gin and. Yes. We have a super special cheese, and we're not going to spoil what that cheese is, but let's just say it's awesome, and it includes gin. Well, let's just <laughs> and say we're pairing with gin. Let's just say that you—it's only in San Diego, and it was—you can't find it anywhere else. It was made. Yes, you cannot find it. Anywhere it was made yet. specifically for us, and uh, it's also a collaboration with a, with a, with another local yes. business that we're going to be supporting. So. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. So hope you could join us then. We have w empty wine bottles at a lot of places, <laughs> which is great. Hopefully empty cheese plates. Thank you all. Uh, we just have a blast and appreciate you tuning in. Happy Thanksgiving yeah. to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. You want to hear mine? You want to hear it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we are going to say goodnight. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, au revoir. <laughs> peace out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, peace out. I was going to say French. Au revoir.